She's one of the most powerful women in the history of the United States, not only serving as the United States Ambassador to the United Nations, but also as the first female Secretary of State. And now, she's speaking about a family secret that changed her life. And joining us now from New York, Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State. She's written a powerful new book entitled Prague Winner, A Personal Story of Remembrance and War in 1937-1948. Uh, Madam Secretary, congratulations on writing this book. It really is very personal and moving. And I want to get to some of the highlights uh, right now. You, you begin the book by writing this. I had no idea that my family was Jewish or that 20 of my relatives had died in the Holocaust. Uh, here's the question, why didn't you know that? The truth is I don't know why I didn't know it, I, but my speculation is that my parents were desperate to start a new life in America when we came here in 1948, and to put some of the tragedy and sadness behind them and to try to create a normal life for us. And not to uh, dwell and make us all feel that we were a part of it. I think my parents did what any parents would do, is to try to protect their children. But I think another reason, Wolf, that I uh, came to as I did research for this book, because I found a novel that my father had written about all this, and I think the bottom line is they couldn't find the words to describe what had happened. There were no words. There were no words, and uh, but you, you've written a lot of words in, in this very amazing book, and I know you've gone through government documents in Prague. You began to suspect something was going on. You were, what, 59 years old, about to become a President Clinton's Secretary of State, and people who knew your parents during World War II were all of a sudden writing to you, talking about their Jewish heritage and uh, family members who died in the Holocaust. When you began to get these letters, what did you think? Well, the letters at the beginning made no sense. I mean, they basically would say, I knew your father when he was in high school in 1915, when he was actually born in 1909, or had all the names wrong or the dates wrong. And finally, in the fall of 1996, I got a letter from somebody, and I was ambassador at the UN at the time, Wolf, uh, a letter from somebody that had all the names and dates and everything right. And when I was being vetted to be Secretary of State, um, they asked me all the normal kinds of questions, and at the end of it, they said, is there anything about you that we haven't asked that you know? And I said, look, I don't know whether this is tr true or not, but I have every reason to believe that I'm of Jewish background. And so they said, so what? Our president is not anti-Semitic. And so it was not until uh, a, a uh, Michael Dobbs from the Washington Post went and did all kinds of research and presented me with this horrifying story of the number of people that had died in concentration camps. And so here I was, Secretary of State. I couldn't go and investigate it all myself. And I've likened it to being asked to represent your country in a marathon and then being given a very heavy package to carry and unwrap as I ran. And so I asked my brother and sister to go to the Czech Republic to begin to investigate the story. And they did. And I've now picked up the threads in this new book. And you've written, uh, as I say, very emotionally about it. Uh, and you get into celebrating Hanukkah, celebrating Christmas with your children and grandchildren. Uh, this week, the president spoke at the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum, and he said this. I'll play the clip. When faced with a regime that threatens global security and denies the Holocaust and threatens to destroy Israel, the United States will do everything in our power to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. So when you hear the president speaking like that, what goes through your mind now? Well, I think that uh, I know that he's got some very hard decisions to make. And what goes through my mind is that we, in fact, as an international community, have to do something to make sure that Iran does not get a nuclear weapon. And I do think that the president and the other members of the uh, Security Council and generally are working to tighten the screws. We also are in the middle uh, or have just begun a series of talks. And my sense is that a lot of lessons have been learned and that, in fact, we are working as an international community to make clear that this is unacceptable. 
one of the most uh, moving parts of the book are the tough choices you write about, tough choices that world leaders have to make, uh, and some very tough choices right now in Syria. How do you deal with those tough choices? Well, I think that is a lot of what the book is about, is that things that kind of seem very clear in retrospect are very hard to deal with at the time, and that often leaders have to look at what the circumstances are and their values and make decisions based on that. Uh, hoping that they're making the right decisions. And I think what the lessons are, for instance, I'm dealing with the period around Munich, when in fact democracies did not work together, when they did in fact appease Hitler, they never pushed back on him, they just kept trying to figure out how to feed the beast, whereas what is going on now is a very systematic way of isolating and putting pressure on the Assad regime and making clear uh, that the international community is watching very carefully and no option is off the table. And I, I really do think that there is no appeasement, uh, except I'm very troubled by the position that the Russians have been, and Chinese have been taking. But I think that there is, lessons have been learned and there's a huge isolation project and pushback on this. The book is a beautiful book, uh, well-researched and documented, Prague winner, A Personal Story of Remembrance and War, 1937-1948. Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State, is the author. I've written a little review of it on our blog as well at CNN.com slash Situation Room. Madam Secretary, as usual, thanks very much. Thank you, Wolf. Good to be with you. Jack Cafferty is asking, uh, which vice presidential candidate would benefit Mitt Romney more, a woman, an Hispanic? Stand by. Your comments and Jack coming up next.